Hello and happy summer solstice 2023. And let's talk about the sun today, or let's uh, have Crowley help us talk about the sun today. And uh, this is the sun card from the Thos Tarot. Now, an enlargement of this image is probably one of the most popular uh, uh, images of the Thoth Tarot that people choose to hang up in their in their house just because it's just so beautiful. Crowley says this in the uh, Book of Thoth about the sun card. This card represents in heraldic language, quote, the sun charged with a rose on a Mount Vert, a green mountain. This is one of the simplest cards. It represents Haru Raha, the lord of the new aeon in his manifestation to the race of men as the sun spiritual, moral, and physical. He is the lord of light life, liberty, and love. This aeon has for its purpose the complete emancipation of the human race. I'm going to repeat that. This aeon has for its purpose the complete emancipation of the human race. The rose represents the flowering of solar influence. Around the whole picture, we see the signs of the zodiac. See? Signs of the zodiac. Okay. In their normal positions, Aries rising in the east and so on. Freedom brings sanity. The zodiac is a kind of childish representation of the body of New Eth. A differentiation and classification, a chosen belt, just one girdle of Our Lady of Infinite Space. Convenience of description excuses this device. The green mount represents the fertility of Earth, its shape, so to speak, aspiring to the heavens. But around the top of the mound is a wall, which indicates that the aspiration of the new aeon does not mean absence of control. Yet outside the wall are the twin children, who in one form or another have so frequently recurred in this whole symbolism. They represent the male and female eternally young, shameless and innocent. They're dancing in the light, yet they dwell upon the earth. They represent the next stage which is to be attained by mankind. And here's another one I probably will repeat. They represent the next stage which is to be attained by mankind, in which complete freedom is alike the cause and the result of the new access of solar energy upon the earth. The restriction of such ideas as sin and death in their old sense has been abolished. At their feet are the most sacred signs of the old aeon. And this is kind of... No, they're not turtle shells. Okay. At their feet are the most sacred signs of the old aeon. A combination of the rose cross from which they are arisen, which still forms their support. So you don't throw the old Aeon baby out with the bath water. 
Okay, that, uh, you know, I, I could go on because it's a, like everything in the Book of Thoth, it's just so damn cool. <laughs> Crowley wrote the right, uh, uh, the seven rites of Eleusis, or Eleusis. And uh, uh, the first one being Saturn, second one being uh, Jupiter. It's coming down the tree of life. Three, four, five was the right of Mars. And six uh, is the right of Sol. Okay. Now, I've mentioned this before, that Crowley's rites of Eleusis aren't a celebration of uh, the planetary sphere, or the god, if you will, of uh, the planetary sphere involved. It's not their story of their exaltation or, or a, a snapshot of them at their best. It's that at first, okay, but it's the dynamics of the the influence of that planetary sphere as it is overtaken by the formula of the planetary sphere that is to follow. So in other words, at the beginning of the, uh, of the rite of uh, uh, Saturn, the very first one, We've got a good idea. Oh, this is Saturn now. This is, oh, that's Saturnian. Oh, this is what Saturn means and everything else. But the plot of the play is, okay, but what's coming next? What takes over Saturn? And uh, in the Rites of Eleusis, it's the descent down the Tree of Life. It's, uh, in, in a sense, uh, the, the stages of spirit becoming matter. So from, from our point of view, it seems like creation. But from the deity's point of view, from, from the supernal triad's point of view, it's a downer. Okay, this is, a, oh God, we're, uh, we're descending into that, that earth. Oh, it's just like we're coming from heaven to, you know, Florida. But, uh, uh, so the, the, the lion's share, if I can use that uh, term talking about the sun, the lion's share of the right shows the dynamics uh, of the fall. And so at the end of Saturn, uh, Jupiter takes over. And at the end of Jupiter, Mars takes over. And at the end of Mars, the sun takes over. And at the end of the sun, Venus takes over. But at the beginning of every one of these rites, the planetary sphere, the god of the planetary sphere, is putting their best foot forward. Okay, this is, this is the presidential honeymoon. Okay. And uh, the rite of Saul starts off with uh, two characters. And they're sort of like comic relief. The officers that guard the sun, that guard the sun in his shrine. And the sun is, is sort of veiled at first. And, and uh, these guys are the guards of the shrine. And they're talking back and forth. And they knock, you know, six times. Their brother Ares, son and Ares, and brother Leo. See the two zodiac signs where the, the sun is exalted and rules. Brother Ares knocks, and then brother Leo knocks. Brother Leo, what is the place? Leo says, the temple of the sun upon the mountain of Abiagnus. Brother Leo, what is the hour? Sunset. See, we're setting the stage for the, 
for the fall, just like today, June 21st, the sun is at its exaltation. Just for a moment, this is the height. Tonight, when the sun goes down, the days start getting shorter, okay? Sunset, Aries says, it is the hour of sacrifice. And Brother Aries, uh, and Leo says, Brother Aries, what is the sacrifice? And Aries says, it is hidden from me. And then from the behind the veil, the character playing the sun that has no spoken words in the, in the whole, right? But they're back there uh, dressed like a pharaoh. And, and behind the veil, the sun uh, knocks. Very symmetrical knock there of six. And Aries goes, hark! It is the summons of the king. And Leo says, it is the Lord of heaven that awakens the children of the light. And then they draw the veil. And there you see the sun for several years. Our son played this role. He's dressed in a leopard skin and and he just gets to sit there and look and radiate. So they draw the veil and it's in full light and then they kneel. And then Leo says a little poem from Shelley, Shelley's Hymn to Nature. Life of life, thy lips enkindled with their love, the breath between them. God, that's, a, <laughs> that's such a good line. Oh, excuse me, I digress. I'll start over again. Life of life, thy lips enkindled with their love, the breath between them. And thy smiles, before they dwindle, make the cold air fire. Then screen them in those looks, where whoso gazes faints, entangled in their mazes. Child of light, thy limbs are burning through the vest which seems to hide them. As the radiant lines of morning through the clouds, ere they divide them. And this atmosphere divinest shrouds thee wheresoe'er thou shinest. Fair are others, none beholds thee. But thy voice sounds low and tender like the fairest, for it folds thee from the sight, that liquid splendor, and all feel, yet see thee never, as I feel now lost forever. Lamp of earth, where thou movest its dim shapes are clad with brightness, and the souls of whom thou lovest walk upon the winds with lightness, till they fail as I am failing, dizzy, lost, yet unbewailing. It's, it's just too cool. I can't stress what a wonderful thing it is to produce these, these magical, magical plays amateurishly in your house with a bunch of friends. It's just, it's true magic. Okay. Uh, now, part of this ritual is the recitation uh, from the Treasure House of Images. Almost all of the rites, I think with only with one exception, uh, Crowley utilizes uh, uh, a, a chapter, a planetary, a zodiacal uh, chapter, uh, 
from JFC Fuller's Treasure House of Images. And for the Rite of Saul, uh, he uses the one that is attributed to Leo. Okay. And each one of these treasure house of images has a thing like that. At the, and this is the Leo one. And it's, it's the chapter known as the Twelvefold Glorification of God and the Unity Thereof. Now, you'll notice that in the, before, like the number two, you see the, the sign of Virgo, and then, then um, Libra, then Scorpio. Now, I drew those in because I wanted to remind myself that every one of these uh, little chapters of the Treasure House of Images, like, okay, there's, uh, uh, there's Virgo. This is the next one. And only the first line is, are, are each of the 13 uh, uh, verses is attributed also to a zodiac sign. And the first one in every case is the, this first line there, O glory uh, be to thee, O God, my God, uh, for I behold thee as a, in the lion. Okay, so that's the Leo line. And the next verse continues through the zodiac. Okay, it's almost easier to show you than it is to uh, uh, describe it. So that's what I'll do. There's Leo. I adore thee by the twelve glorifications and by the unity thereof. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the lion rampant of the dawn. Thou hast crushed with thy paw the crouching lioness of night, so that she may roar forth the glory of thy name. Virgo. In other words, this is, that was the Leo of Leo. This is the Virgo of Leo. That's how it goes, okay? O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the lap of the fertile valleys. Thou hast adorned thy, their strong limbs with a robe of poppied corn so that they may laugh forth the glory of thy name. This would be the Libra. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the gilded rout of dancing girls. Thou hast garland their naked middles with fragrant flowers, so that they may pace forth the glory of thy name. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the riotous joy of the storm. Thou hast shaken the gold dust from the tresses of the hills, so that they may count forth the glory of thy name. Sagittarius. O glory to be, excuse me, O glory to be, <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, glory be to thee. Okay, that's what that's what I'm shooting for. Oh, glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the stars and the meteors of night. Thou hast caparisoned her gray coursers with moons of pearl so that they may shake forth the glory of thy name. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the precious stones of black earth. 
Thou hast lightened her with myriad eyes of magic, so that she may wink forth the glory of thy name. Aquarius. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the sparkling dew of the wild glades, for thou hast decked them out as for a great feast of rejoicing, so that they may gleam forth the glory of thy name. Pisces. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the stillness of the frozen lakes. Thou hast made their faces more dazzling than a silver mirror, so that they may flash forth the glory of thy name. Now, the zodiac starts over again with Aries. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the smoke-veiled fire of the mountains. Thou hast inflamed them as lions that scent a fallow deer, so that they may rage forth the glory of thy name. Taurus. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the countenance of my darling. Thou hast unclothed her of white lilies and crimson roses, so that she may blush forth the glory of thy name. Gemini. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the weeping of the flying clouds. Thou hast swelled Therewith the blue breasts of the milky rivers, so that they may roll forth the glory of thy name. In Cancer. O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the amber combers of the storm. Thou hast laid thy lash upon the sphinxes of the waters, so that they may boom forth the glory of thy name. The thirteenth one is always, O glory be to thee, O God, my God, for I behold thee in the lotus flower within my heart. Thou hast emblazed my trumpet with the lion's standard, so that I may blare, bl bl blare forth the glory of thy name. It always ends with the sun. O oh, glory be unto thee through all time and through all space. Glory and glory upon glory everlastingly. Amen and amen and amen. Now, every one of those verses has the exact same number of syllables. This is constructed, takes you through the whole, the whole zodiac and a, and a few other treats too. It is, Crowley considered it one of the most powerful enchantments uh, ever written. Uh, but anyway, that's our little celebration this morning of the of the summer solstice, uh, and. Uh, Actually, I hope you get yourself a copy of the Treasure House of, uh, of Images. Uh, if you uh, I can't f find a copy in a, in a reasonably priced uh, edition of its own, uh, I believe I've uh, included it in the Wiser uh, Best of Equinox uh, series uh, in, uh, I think, Dramatic Ritual edition of that. So that's a nice, reasonably priced paperback edition. It includes the Treasure House of Images and all of the rights of Eleusis. So anyway, that's it for today. 
I hope uh, I hope uh, if you haven't already that you'll want to uh, add to your summer reading list uh, the newly released uh, uh, expanded completed version of uh, an accidental Christ and uh, I think you'll find that amusing summer reading. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.